All right, ready in three, two, one. Hey everyone, and welcome to the wonderful world of weddings. My name is Dan Krikorian. I am so happy to have you here. Uh, we are sponsored by Be Remembered Weddings, where you can build your dream wedding and have a wonderful wedding at BeRememberedWeddings.com. Now, today I have a very special guest with me, someone that I've probably interacted with in the past and we didn't even realize. So this is Sarah from Olio out in Peabody, Massachusetts, and she is a venue owner, a recent venue owner of about four years now, and we have her on to talk a little bit about venues and everything that goes into planning your wedding for a venue, which is great because we just came off the planning side of podcast. So Sarah, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be here. And so I just want to really talk about the process leading up to Olio because it's such an interesting journey. And so right before we got on this call, we were talking about the fact that you're new to the venue space. So have you owned a venue in the past or is this the first one? This is the first wedding venue I've owned. This is the first commercial property that I've owned. This is the first time I've been a landlord. We actually have a, a commercial tenant in our building. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of firsts there for me. Um, what this isn't is this isn't my first foray into weddings, right? So mm-hmm. I've worked in weddings now um, for uh, about 10 years. And so I was um, have been operating a wedding planning company since mm-hmm. early 2013. So I had I had a lot uh, of experience in, on one side of the coin, but this is yep. a totally different beast. <laughs> well, that explains a lot, though, because I, I must tell you, when I was there, your staff was extremely friendly and everything went very very smooth, which never really happens with people when they don't know the planning side of things. So that is a luxury that I feel like you can bring to the space, just that expertise, you know? Yeah, I think that that I I really try and bring all those years of experience in working at other venues to the Mm -hmm. table. So like things I loved, things that didn't work so great. Mm -hmm. Of course, like there's no kind of foolproof, um, you know, kind of formula there. Like there's always going to be issues. And and especially when you put a couple hundred people in a room and and an open bar, you know, there's always going to be some challenges. But I do think that, you know, I was coming with a couple hundred weddings under my belt personally. And that Mm -hmm. really helped to inform a lot of the decisions that I made. when I built it. Yep. And let me ask you this because, and I mean this in the nicest way, I've done this so many times where you you think to yourself, oh, I'm going to do it better. And then you go in and you go, oh, that's why they do it this way. Did you have any of those moments? Oh my gosh. Yeah. (laughs) I, I just, I think that the biggest kind of learning curve for me or realization is that having been on the planning side and worked in all these other people's spaces, I was always like, Oh, you know, there's this venue manager who's there and she's always yelling at everyone not to drag the tables or they're always Mm -hmm. saying, close the door, close the door, you know, or you can't put that table there that, you know, um, and now that's me. (laughs) (laughs) And you just realize like, Oh, there's, there's a reason for that, you know, as vendors, you know, photographers and videographers and DJs and planners, we go into a space and then we leave the space and we might right. do it day after day, week after week. But yep. ultimately, like what you have as an asset is your yourself, it's your equipment mm-hmm. and that's it. But what the venue has is only the building. And so right. if the building um, isn't serviceable, you know, mm-hmm. from the end of the wedding on Saturday night to the next, you know, the, the brunch wedding on Sunday morning, if it yep. can't turn around like that, uh, there's no business model there. Right, right, right. And that's, it's just so funny though, because you're right. You see it from just different perspectives. And I think it, it really humbles you in a way because you're just like, wait, I need to think about all the different angles here. Cause I, I missed it completely. Right. It's, it's a complete world flip. Um, but actually speaking of which, how did you get into wedding planning before, you know, what was that journey like? Yeah. So when I started in 2013, it was an interesting time in weddings. Like this was the beginning of Pinterest, like kind of pre Instagram. Like this was like, uh, this was a time when people were just starting to really want to uh, take an active hand in planning their own weddings but Mm -hmm. wanting help with that process along the way. And so I had been working events um, already at that point for many years. Um, I was working in nonprofit actually. So I was Mm -hmm. doing um, events that that were fundraising focused and that were largely logistics focused. And I was working a ton. I was working like 40, 50, 60 hours a week for somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great. And then I got to my mid twenties and my friends started to get engaged and they're asking me questions about their weddings because they knew I worked 
worked with photographers and with DJs, that kind of thing. Yep. I'm like, oh, I, I can package this. I can put this together. So mm-hmm. what happened was um, I started this business called Without a Hitch, um, and we focused solely on wedding day coordination. So mm-hmm. that was born out of the fact that I had a full-time job. So I wasn't interested in spending 400 hours with a client planning every aspect of their wedding. Um, but what what actually came out of it was that that's truly my expertise is is mm-hmm. not on the the, the whole kind of design side of things, which is its own specialty, but really I focus on um, on the logistics and execution. And that has been a great niche for me from 2013 until now. The business is still is still operating separately from Oleo. So I kind of got my hand in it a little bit yep. Um, yep. through nonprofit and I and I launched I launched without a hitch just about 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense too, because when you're in the coordination space and and like you said, it's so managerial, right? I mean, you're putting all the pieces together and so logistical. And so that does translate so well onto a venue. The design aspect, you're absolutely right though. It's a, it's a whole nother beast. It really is. And I've met people who can design, uh, I mean, incredible spaces and be terrible at the execution. Yeah. And, and so you really need to either have that combination together or have two people working together to put it all there, um, totally. which is so funny. So that's fantastic. Okay. That's how you, that, that all kind of ties together nicely, isn't it? Doesn't it? And then you told me earlier too, that you started this four years ago. That's right before COVID. And then COVID comes in. I even told you how we were actually following you during that time and seeing all of these updates. How has it been since? And, and you know, how's that transformation um, taking place? We're rebuilding. I mean, I think you could ask anyone and you can share your own experience from the wedding industry is that um, things are not the same as before. They, mm-hmm. They're they definitely uh, busier. Um, mm-hmm. In some ways, it's a little bit frenetic, right? It's a little bit of trying to make, play catch up for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, but it definitely... I don't see us going back to 2019 times. So yeah. that has been, that's been a challenge for me because, and for many people, because I, I simply built, you know, a business, two businesses over many years with, mm-hmm. with a set of knowledge yeah. and all of that got turned upside down in the beginning of 2020. We had opened about uh, eight months earlier, um, mm-hmm. you know, f- f- uh, right in the middle of 2019, we opened our doors at Olio. Um, and the biggest challenge with that timing wise, and I know there are many other businesses who had the same struggle was that we had made this massive capital investment. We bought a building, we renovated a building, we spent $1 million just renovating the building. Yep. Um, and we, in order to pay off our debt service, right, our, our monthly mortgage, we had to be open. Yep. Uh, now we weren't open. And not only were we not open, but when the government got together their grant and loan programs, we were disqualified from many of those because we were not in the black in 2000. 19. You were not functioning. Yep. yep. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't profitable in 2019. I mean, right. I don't think even if we'd had a full year of operation, we would have been profitable. It's just not how it works with a, 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 an intensive capital business like this. So of course. Uh, we, yeah, we really struggled. I think where I had, I had this moment in the middle of March, 2020, which I think many other vendors um, and professionals in this world did, which was like, do I, do I walk away? <laughs> right. Do I try and get rid of this asset and, mm-hmm. and try and like go back to a day job, which I used to have, I had been gone for five years, but do I, do I like want to go try and work for someone else? Right, um, right. Or do I try to see this through from where we are now to whenever this ends? And, mm-hmm. and obviously I chose the latter path. It, it was the yeah. best path. Um, for me, and I'm I'm really glad I did, but it, that was not an easy choice, or, or frankly, an easy journey. By by any means, no. And I think um, I think a lot of vendors and venues uh, share that same story. Unfortunately, I, I think some of them who may have had some capital built up, um, you know, like you said, used the government to aid, and then they also had maybe some cash reserve if they were intelligent, you know, to to allow them, especially if they were. Um, well established, but yeah, that, that was a big part. And like you said, I think the funniest part was March, 2020, we had a very, very similar situation over here. 
um, in terms of be remembered, we were thankful because we can expand with the times. So, you know, for us, we can take on more jobs. We can train more people. We can buy more equipment. Um, we can very, we, we, we have a variable system for a venue. You can only take on so many jobs. And so, you know, you can try to pack in three or a weekend or however many your capacity is, but that is your capacity and your capacity alone. Um, which actually leads us into a great little stopping point here, because when we come right back to the break, we're actually going to talk about how to find that perfect venue for someone and what that means, what a venue means, you know, what it attributes to something we also discussed with, with Olio because of my experience there is the type of photos that you're going to get. And so you need to understand what you're looking for and and what you're going to get when you go into it. Um, so For everyone joining us right now, we're going to take a quick break with Sarah here. We're going to come back and pick her brain on, you know, what her venue offers. And then, of course, what other venues offer for most couples and see where it takes us. So thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll be right back. My name is Daniel, and this is the Wonderful World of Weddings podcast. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the wonderful world of weddings. I am here with Sarah from Olio in Peabody, Massachusetts. But before we get right back into our conversation, I want to let you know that this show is brought to you by the New New England Wedding Expo. Don't mind me over here. It's been a long day. Uh, But the New England Wedding Expo is hosted on April 16th, the Best Western in Marlboro, Massachusetts. It's the Royal Plaza and Trade Center. So join us there. You can actually sign up now. The first 150 guests are free. So Sarah, we're going to jump right back into our conversation here and really use your expertise in both coordination and owning this venue to help our audience out with some practical considerations. So number one, you're in Peabody. It's funny because New England has people from all over and I find it so interesting. We take advantage of the foliage, the beautiful snow, right? The incredible shoreline that we have. And Olio has this rustic downtown area as well that we were just talking about. So you were telling me, where do most people have their ceremonies when they book with you? So what's really nice about our space is that it's one really big loft space. And so most couples do their ceremonies on site. Um, I would say like three quarters, 80% of our couples, they do everything all in one room. Um, I like to joke that like, you can't like lose your aunt Sue kind of walking from <laughs> one room to the other because they're like, she's going to be in the room somewhere. Right. Right. Um, and so it's really nice to have everything there. That said, most couples want a variety of backdrops for their photos. And so many couples will walk, along downtown to take pictures there's a ton of wonderful backdrops from storefronts to different brick kind of concrete uh there's a ton of foliage um and there's what's really nice um is that the city built a a beautiful park across the street and so couples can just walk down and have that greenery kind of garden backdrop with their downtown photos Yeah. And it's actually a very cost effective measure too, because I was talking on our last podcast about how if you can have your getting ready, your ceremony and your reception in the same location, or at least have your reception and ceremony in the same location, you're going to save a bunch of money on your photography, your videography, your DJ, et cetera. You're not driving around. You don't need secondary setups. It's a great win. And unlike you said too, you don't have to worry about Aunt Sue getting lost, Uncle Bob driving down the wrong road or not knowing where to park, right? It's a great style. So that is a huge thing. And you're right as well that I think location, as far as I can tell, when I when I recommend to people, it's all about trying to understand what you want as your backdrop in your scenery, right? Some people, they're going to love the park. They want the shoreline, right? And, and that's just going into it. There's so many venues to choose from. So knowing what you want off the bat, I think, is a, is a huge win, right? But then it also comes down to capacity. Now, I don't know what Oleo's capacity is. I've actually, I've seen some really large parties there. So what do you guys tend to work with? 
We tend to work with couples who are in the one to 200 range, most wow. often for an on-site ceremony. Um, you know, we've done up to 220 with an on-site ceremony. So that means using part of the room for the ceremony and part of the room for dinner, and then kind of reusing that ceremony space for the dance floor, really big dance yep. floor. Yep. That works really well in that one to 200 range. And then when couples do have an off-site ceremony, so let's say they're at a church or we've had several couples who maybe eloped and, and they just want to have the big party um yep. you know we can do up to 300 in that manner um so it is quite flexible and i will say just last month we had a party of over 450 people now that was cocktail style and it was not a wedding yes it was really a dance party but <laughs> you know i like to point that out that the room itself uh, adapts to mm. the size that the couple is looking for we have done weddings as small as 25 and 30 people during covid um and even like 50 60 70 people you know post covid people love having a lot of space to spread out having room for you know games or lounge furniture or a big photo booth and not having to feel constrained yeah yeah and that's a big part of it you know what and, and so this is really funny we do some research into what people are booking currently what they did book and and seeing the trends change from pre covid covid and now the way they're starting to shift back up, but you also see the recession is starting to kick in a little bit and they're starting to slide. And yeah, right. Very interesting. And, and of course, what's the first thing people do to limit budget is people. Yeah. Have you seen, and, and this is what I saw, but have you seen parties grow larger over the past two years simply to get together with those friends? And you know, what do you think is going on for the future? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a mixed bag, to be honest, because we had couples who booked, you know, in 2019, 2020, 2021, who were expecting 200 guests. Um, maybe they were inviting 220 or 230. They thought they'd be at 200. And then, you know, maybe they had, you know, 180 RSVPs, and then some people might not have felt well enough to travel the week of the wedding. So things kind of are dropping. Um, and they're more in flux closer to the wedding date. That's the biggest shift. I mean, it used to be, 30 days out, you set your number, that was your number, it didn't shift. And now um, people are much more conscientious of not going to things when they're not feeling well, um, or have had right. exposure or, or otherwise, you know, can't travel. So the, 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 the numbers are fluctuating, but I definitely still see big parties. People, people have missed their friends and family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And that was definitely the thing. It was like, oh, this is an excuse to get everyone together that I haven't seen in so long. It's a beautiful moment. So it's great, right? I I mean, it, it's the ideal scenario for everyone there. Yeah, that's too funny. I mean, that's definitely the case. But at the same time, and so it's funny because we don't even have this on our list, but I wanted to chat because you and I chatted about this. My background was photography, videography. I've done coordination. I've done photo booth. I've done DJ. It's ridiculous. But um, for photography, the biggest thing is knowing the style of photo that you want and knowing the limitation of the space because something like Olio, I... I remember my photos, they had that dark and moody feel. Now, they were stunning, and I loved playing with that because, to be honest, quite often I don't get to play with that style. It's a lot of the, I want them light, I want them light, I want them light, and it's like, yes, but you're missing the detail of the space yeah. and that that feeling that, that you know, there's some type of texture that, that just leaves that with you. Um, and Olio really brings that out with the brick and with the, you know, the hardwood floor and the, and the nice lights. And even outside, I remember we took a photo in front of the sign and I used the sign as an accent light and it, and it just had such an incredible feeling of depth. And, um, you know, you still have that love and that passion. People tend to think that love has to be light and airy. I don't, I think it could be dark and moody, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's something that I feel like people should really consider when choosing a venue. Absolutely. You do have to, you know, consider where you're going to take photos. And I think that on the flip side of the venue choice, you have to consider who you want to work with for your photographer, right? Sure. Are, they, are they skilled at taking low light photos, right? How many weddings take place entirely when it's light out? Mm -hmm. very few right so you're gonna have a photographer who needs to know how to use some kind of flash or or external light source um and what do those photos look like do you like them right um mm -hmm. so i think it's just really important on all sides that clients are looking at portfolios i know from my end i spend too much time on you know sharing photos on instagram and facebook and you know on our website because i want clients to see what their options are 
Absolutely. And you're, you're right. I mean, I get a lot of people who call me up and they say, have you worked with low light? I bring extra flashes whenever I'm in a low light environment, which is huge. I bring off camera flashes, usually yeah. two of them. Um, one thing that they had at the surprise engagement party. So we'll, we'll talk about that at the end of it, just cause it's a fun story. Um, but they had those candles that I think were a beautiful setup um, mm -hmm. and, and really kind of played into that dark, almost like castle-like feel, which I think was just a lot of fun. Um, and, and again, this is something that you don't get often. There are other castles out there. Actually, I'm trying to think of Hammond. Hammond Castle is one of them that you get a very similar feeling for. We did a great shot there this year for video that I was in love with. Um, so yeah, again, all of these things are something that people really need to consider going in. And you know, there are so many venues. You got to find the right venue for you. You got to find the right photographer that can shoot that venue and work with that. You know, dark and moody, and really have a good time there. So, um, you know, I try to be conscious. One thing that I will tell you, and not to plug, be remembered in any regard, but more just my my style of photography. I believe that you should learn how to shoot in multiple styles. I've yeah. never been one to be like, you have to be light and airy. You have to do this. I've been one to be like, you need to know how to use, how to manipulate that camera to make it for what the couple wants, not for what you and your portfolio wants, you know? Yes. So yes, please. And, and I will tell you, like, I've looked at millions of wedding photos in my, in my 10 years, you know, uh, hundreds of weddings, thousand photos per wedding. You do the math, but portfolio, I, um, I can I can tell which photographers know what they're doing and which which don't, frankly. So yes. It's always so nice to get wonderful photos back because you're like, yay, these show off the space really well. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and so one of the the things about venues too is people have to go in and want, you know, ask a few things. I and I think this is the tough part. This is our education. You know, what should they be asking about the venue when they walk in? You know. Uh, right off the top of my, my mind is catering tables. You know, is there anything else that people need to know about going in? And do you guys cater? How does that work? So at Olio, we're just the space rental. So we have a space um, and then we do have a set of furniture that's included. And I would flip your question, honestly, Daniel, and I would put it back to the client and I would say, what research have you done going into these venue tours? So me as a venue owner on any given week, I might give a dozen tours, right? I remember all of them. I love meeting couples. I love hearing couples stories. Yep. Tours like ultimately the same, like it's the same space day after, you know, tour after tour, but mm -hmm. the couples are different. So the couples should be able to, as they tour different venues, not show up with a set list of questions necessarily, but conversely, they should really be able to um, have researched those venues to, to pre-qualify themselves, really to know that they're a right fit before they spend an hour driving and then an hour kind of um, on site there touring the venue. Absolutely. All right, guys, well, we're going to take a quick break here and we're going to come right back to it. We're going to start talking about logistics and some considerations for that couple, what they should be researching prior to going to the venue. So that's a great spot for us to stop. I'm here with Sarah from Olio and Peabody, and we'll be right back on the wonderful world of weddings. Thanks, guys. Every step, writing stories that seek to be read, taking hold of the moment as we discover. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the wonderful world of weddings. My name is Daniel Krikorian. I am so happy to have you here, and we hope to answer some of your questions for the big wedding day coming up. I have Sarah from Olio and Peabody with me right now, and we are talking. I am picking her brain, actually, and really learning as much as I can about, well, the coordination process for a venue. And I know that in our recent episodes, we had planners on, and we were really diving into the nitty-gritty of how to plan, what to think about, you know, what a planner can do for you versus planning on your own. We talked about it all, your wedding websites, et cetera. But 
we even really before we get to that step, we got to find a venue. Now, if you have a planner, they might be working through and asking all the questions that you may not know of just yet. But my thought is, I want to give you the questions to really look for and to ask prior to wasting your time and driving out to these venues that might not be the right fit for you. So number one, especially on everyone's mind after the holiday season is cost, right? I mean, that's huge. And so what really goes into the cost? You know, how do I, number one, how do I set my budget for a venue? Can you gain a little bit? I'd love to help people out there. How do I set my budget for a venue? Well, I'll tell you from my end, it's really, really simple. You go to oleopbd.com and you click on the pricing tab. The Mm -hmm. prices are right there. We publish them. I don't know why. I do know why, but many (laughs) venues don't do this. Um, And for me, like, um, you know, I know from planning my own weddings, from planning clients' weddings, it's just really frustrating to have to send an email to get any sense of pricing, either a range or a starting cost, um, and to, and to not know that you're kind of either out of your budget or just not a fit for whatever reason. So we, it's, from my end, we put it all up there. Now, the flip side of that is you do have to know what's included, right? So yes. I, that's, on, that's on the website as well. Yep. Um, as I noted earlier, our pricing includes exclusive use of the space. We just do one event per day. So you've kind of held the whole day on our calendar, yep. um, as well as the furniture that we have. Everything else clients bring in. So that would be mm-hmm. catering, bar, uh, entertainment, lighting, florals, you know, all the decor, um, you know, every element of photo video, the clients are going to choose who they want to work with. And in that manner, clients can really decide what's important to them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then during our break, we actually talked about availability as well. You know, if you have a date, especially on a big weekend, you know, you were talking about how you border Salem. So October is a big month. It's a big month for a lot of the industry. I'd say, you know, your September time frames, your May, your Junes, you know, they're, they're huge, right? They're going to get booked quick. But um, going to that venue almost first and saying, hey, look, do you either have my date available or yeah. do you have a date near it? You know, so then I can say, okay, look, Olio has my date that I want. This other venue only has the Sunday after my date that I want, you know, and and that, that might really start narrowing down venues for you and help you out there. Um, so that's, that's a big thing. And then of course, you know, is there any restriction on that date or time frame? Now you guys, you block it out, right? You block the whole day out. Other venues don't always do that. So I've had, I've shot at venues and the funniest thing is when our teams go to the same venue and they're like, hi, hi. And they're literally doing one here, one there, you know, using different spaces. So it can happen. Um, there's actually two venues in the Cape that happened three times this year. And it was so funny to see our guys were waving to each other across the, the, the park. Um, so that's a big part. And then the other part of this is parking. If you have 400 guests, where do you park these guys? Now, I didn't know this about Olio because I guess I got special treatment and got to park around the back. Um, but you guys have quite a bit of parking around you, don't you? Yeah, so we, um, we're we right on the main street. So 43 Main Street and Peabody, we're in the middle of Peabody Square, which is, you know, Peabody is a city. So it's definitely a municipal area. Um, and the best part about that from my end is that there are a ton of municipal parking spots. So we don't have our own private parking, like similar to any other downtown venue. We have, uh, we depend on municipal parking spots. But in Peabody, uh, there are about 500 uh, metered and lot spots within walking distance. So we've never had a problem with folks uh, finding their way. Mm -hmm. And now one other thing too, that's really funny and it kind of all goes together, but the accommodations, you know, you have these 400 guests, you got to put them up in a hotel, especially if you're having, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the word and I'm so sorry. I've been in this industry for too long to blank on this. But uh, your rehearsal dinner. Rehearsal, yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> so if you have your rehearsal dinner nearby, you want to make sure everyone's around that same area the night before. Now, did you position yourself near any hotels? Now, being in downtown Peabody, I assume there are. And that's a yeah. huge piece of this, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I frankly, like, I, I bought a 112-year-old building. Like, I didn't choose the location of the building. But right. one of the things that was really attractive to me about downtown Peabody was its proximity to both Salem and Route 1 and the highway getting into yeah. Logan. 
Logan. And so yeah. without traffic, we're 25 minutes from Logan mm -hmm. um, and we're five minutes from downtown Salem. And so you've got hotels on both ends of that, yep. um, you know, in Peabody on route one, you know, five to 10 minutes away. And in downtown Salem, there's some amazing boutique hotels that people mm -hmm. choose for their room blocks. Yeah. And, and Salem has some very interesting hotels that we've actually done some weddings at and they, they creep me out a little bit, but we won't get into that. My, uh, <laughs> History. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit of a baby when it comes to that stuff, but don't mind me. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's a big part of it. Okay. And, you know, as well as getting ready. So you guys don't offer the bridal suite there, but you do have so many around you. And I think that that's really the bonus. That's something that people should always look for. If you don't have the accommodations nearby, it's a 30 minute drive, 40 minute drive, whatever have you, you should be looking for a bridal suite on site to make your life easier. For you guys, you have so many so close by, you don't have to worry about that in the same extent. Yeah, exactly. I think that works well for the groom or the bride or both um, is to, to get ready at the hotel. And as I always mm -hmm. joke, like often if there's women involved, the getting ready is going to start at seven in the morning. So <laughs> it's nice to have room service and mimosas and yeah. all that kind of stuff, even if your ceremony is not till 5 p.m. So hotels yeah. are perfect for that. Yeah. And if you're a guy, you're rolling out of bed and uh, getting dressed and getting there on time. I always talk about this. It bothers me. I was going to say something that was worse, but I, I just, it makes me laugh when I go in as the photographer and guys don't even have their pants on yet. Never, it kills never. me. I'm just yeah. like, guys, put your pants on. Like, let's go. It's so odd that I have to wrangle them. And then women come in and they're just like, I have everything set on the bed for you. Here's all the detail shots. I'm like, Oh God, I love working with you so much more. Like it kills me. <laughs> so it's just so funny, the comparisons, but I will tell you, that's why I love coordinators as well. Cause I, every time I have a coordinator on site, I go in, guys are dressed, they're ready to go. They got boutonnieres on. I'm like, let's do this. We take some photos. I move on to the, you know, the bridesmaids and it's a good day. But yeah, I think one of the last things that we're just going to wrap up here in this session and then also, or in this part, um, it's just flexibility because you guys are very flexible in the regards that you have the space for the whole day. And like we were talking about prior, you can transform the space. If you have 200 guests, you can put the photo booth, you can have the large dance floor, you can have the large ceremony space, you can flip it all around. You know, that's a big part of what people want in their day. I see all too often where the space is limiting or they have to do a major swap and they just, you know, they're almost shuffling people around and it seems very unorganized. Yeah, for me, um, building the space the way I did, it, the name of the game was flexibility or the flip side of the word flexibility would be customization. And so ultimately, um, my ideal client for Olio is a couple who knows what they want or at least knows what they care about and they want to customize that element of the day. So uh, lighting is a big part of it or decor or having the 14 piece band or having the photo and the video teams on site, whatever it is that's important to them, they, it can be done because ultimately we're not restricting that from a venue side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like we talked about too prior, the one that I was there for that you remembered as well was the surprise wedding. And when we come back from the break, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of share that story with everyone. But um you know, they had candles and I thought mm -hmm. it was absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, again, low light. So you're going to have that more dark and moody feel, mm -hmm. uh, but it made for wonderful photos and it was a lot of fun and it was different. You know, that's something yeah. where you go into a venue and the venue's really whatever it was built to be. And that's it, right? You're tied into it. You may change up the decor a little bit or the flowers or maybe make your entrance, but that's, that's all you're working with. So I, I think you're right, that customization piece of it. But, you know, you make a great point. You need a couple that knows what they want. Mm -hmm. You really do. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be right back in just a few minutes. We're going to talk a lot about fun stories and weddings. And uh, if you're in for that, join us here in just a few minutes, and we'll talk more. We'll see you soon, guys. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the wonderful world of weddings. My name is Daniel Krikorian, and we are so happy to have you here. Uh, this show was actually brought to you by the New England Wedding Expo on April 16th at the 
Oh, Royal Plaza Hotel in Marlboro, Massachusetts. It is the hotel and trade center, so make sure to join us there. The first 150 guests can actually get uh, in for free using the code early. So jump on to the New England Wedding Expo uh, com to sign up today. So right now I am joined with Sarah from Olio in Peabody, Massachusetts. We are having a wonderful conversation. If you were unable to join us before now, go back and listen to it. We want to talk about everything that has to do with your venue on your big wedding day. We did have on some planners recently talking about that entire process leading up. It is quite the process, but we're going to act as if we have it all figured out right now, right? <laughs> we're, with a couple, we have it all figured out. And uh, we just want to sit back and listen to some fun stories. And then also we're going to wrap it up with some final tips and resources here. So first and foremost, Sarah and I did a wedding together without knowing. But it wasn't so much a wedding. It was it was quite confusing. And it was actually my first, was it my first taste of oleo? I think it was my first taste. By the way, oleo to me always sounds like an oil. It sounds like a an Italian restaurant to me. And I kind of, I love it for that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> where did you come up with that name actually speaking of which i can't believe i haven't asked you this yet so the building itself which is 112 years old uh was built as a theater and um and when it was operating as a theater they were doing live shows they were doing vaudeville shows they were doing movies and at the back of the stage which is no longer in the building but you know you can really see the architecture of the building yeah. um, at the back of the stage there was a curtain that was hanging there on opening night and the kind of curtain it was was an oleo curtain so it's actually an old kind of historic term um yeah. that's theater related so i love that Oh, that's wonderful. You know, it's funny. Whenever I ask people for their names, they always give me great stories. And yeah. like last week, it was all about um, this woman's mother. And she named the company after her mother. And it was this wonderful story. And I was like, you know, you just made something that, I mean, it was a great name and it was very simple, but you just made it have so much more depth. And I love yeah. that. I love hearing that story. So that's wonderful, especially with a site like that, that has so much history there. Yes. Just kind of, keeping that throughout the years. It's, it's perfect. So, so anyways, we'll get back to our story. So we get there. How did the couple approach you on this? Did they come out right out the bat and tell you? Yeah, they did. They did because for me, as I noted, I put my pricing on the website. So it's not, it's not like I, there's a wedding surcharge, right? So it wasn't, they weren't trying to hide it. Yeah. Um, when they came up to me for the initial tour, they proposed what they were going to do. And I, um, I won't say I tried to talk them out of it, but I kind of <laughs> gave them some of the pros and cons of it. Um, ultimately, they went forward with their original plan. And I think they were really delighted by it. So I'm so glad we got to service that. What was that like for you to be, to be, witnessing that well and so that was the funniest thing they so this couple approached us similar to you and they're just like hey um so do you do engagement parties i'm like yes yeah of course we do no problem they're like well it's a surprise wedding i was like mm, excuse me and i don't know about you i've done a lot of weddings never heard that before and i was mm -hmm. like you're gonna you're gonna do what now and they're like we're gonna surprise everyone and just have a wedding on the day and so you know they say this initially and we're like, yeah, sure. Not a problem. Like we'll make it work. Right. So they hire us for photo and video. And I remember calling them to do kind of our final details call. And I went and kind of clicked into my head. I was like, Oh wait, this is that couple. Like we're going to do this this week. And so I had all these questions and they're like, um, well, okay. How do we do this? And I was like, I don't really know. I was like, I, I, I can answer so many questions, but I don't know. Like, we're going to play this one by ear. And you're yeah. just going to have to tell me each step of the way. But then the day of, and you and I were talking about this, they they were just like, oh, we're just going to do it now. I was like, no. <laughs> like, you need to, I was like, you need to give us time. I need to move this here and this here and tip no one off. And so they were, and you know, you and I were talking about a super sweet couple. Um very Boston, which was really funny. All of his oh, yeah. friends, they were so Southy. That was the greatest thing. I, I can't even do the accent justice, but they were just coming up and they were just like, what the hell are you doing? And all right, here's another great thing for you. Did you notice the reaction of the women in the audience versus the men? Because this was... No, tell me what you saw. It was fabulous. Okay. They say, we're actually getting married. And all of the men are just like, what? 
And the women are like, oh my God, this is great. And it took the men like a solid 10 minutes before they're like, we're actually going to do your, your really? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, what's so funny about that is like, yeah, it was, it was non-traditional. That mm-hmm. is my client in a nutshell. We have a lot of non-traditional couples. This was mm-hmm. a little bit outside the box of even <laughs> non-traditional, but, but it turned out so good, right? Yeah. Like, like, like the, I, my only regret for them. And this is what I warned them about. I was like, I hope everyone comes who wants to come. Like, I hope people don't miss it. And right. they, and they made that happen for themselves. I think that's a great point because you're going to see an engagement invitation and be like, I don't know, honey, we may not have the time tonight. Like I might not do, you know, like we have other things to do. You see a wedding invitation. You're like, we're going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. They got what they wanted out of it though. And it was perfect. And I just think they're really, they were again, non-traditional, but super emblematic of who Oleo couples are, which is they want to do things their way. And I love that. Well, and also too, the way you guys shifted the room around using that corner too, little challenging from a photography standpoint, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, having no space was a little flat, but the corner was actually the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, sneaking around the guests. I think that is funny though. Hardwood does drive me a little crazy because it squeaks. And so if everyone's <laughs> really quiet, I'm like, er, er, er. I'm like, oh, hey, don't mind me. The six foot two giant taking photos over here. <laughs> No one's, no one's paying attention to you. They're all focused on the couple. You don't worry about it. <laughs> I know, but I feel like they're putting on the rings and everyone's like waiting in anticipation. And like no music is going. And you just hear, er, er, I'm like, <laughs> sorry. I'd rather hear that than, a, than an airplane overhead or, you know, like some yeah, of the outdoor yeah. sounds are way worse. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But this is where my mind goes because I'm trying to yeah. be so sneaky. And I know for a fact that this is not sneaky at all and it never will be (laughs) um but yeah no it was it was too funny but you're right though i think the way you changed over the room and then we had the light up they were quite the partiers so they were dancing all night long oh my god i remember i left like halfway through and they were just like can you stay we're gonna keep the party going oh no they were just like i forgot about that too they're just like do you want to stay and party with us and i was like um not tonight (laughs) that's always awkward you're like i really like you but i want to go home (laughs) yeah it's like i've i've been working you've been celebrating i've been working i um it's it's 12 o'clock at night and i'm ready to go so Yeah. yeah that is too funny but um before i run out of time i want to ask you tips for the couple what should they know any resources that you always suggest to people maybe even before they find you as a venue or you know when they're when they're reaching out initially how you know what do you you tell them what do they need to do sure i'll give you kind of the high level to keep it really quick and easy to easy to hear so first of all do your research look on websites look through um, social make sure that this looks like a match for what you might be looking for Uh, my second tip is you need to hire a planner or coordinator like everyone needs somebody who's on their side who's making it happen that day so that's like a major tip Mm -hmm. um, you know from my end Uh, the third is like do your research in terms of cost so at a venue like oh you're definitely going to want to talk to um um, you know, caterers, because that is the single biggest cost yep. factor for any wedding. Um, but certainly at, a, at any venue with off-premise catering, like, you know, start to get some quotes, do some research. Um, mm. You know, those, I think that's, those are great starting points. Ultimately, when yeah. you're starting to plan your wedding, if your listeners are just, you know, in the initial stages, you're going to want to figure out your, your date, your budget, your, you know, and your venue um, and and your guest count. Those four things are your first four steps and they all interchange to be the first thing. So you have to decide what's important to you. Yeah, no, that, that's actually great advice because you're absolutely right. And, you know, I think our planners prior to coming on here with you, um, they were talking about that simple fact, but it is a great point, you know, deciding if you are going to take this on, on your own, really knowing what that priority, where, where it stands, you know, is it the location? Is it the fact, um, of your guest count? Is that going to be a limitation? You know, wh- where are we going to go? I mean, that, that could, that could take out some venues right off the bat. And Definitely. that's a big thing. Um, but before I let you go, go ahead and let us know where to find you and Olio. And you said you had your pricing right on the site. So that's yeah. fantastic. But how do they get in contact? Is it best to email, to call? What do we do? 
The best way to get the quickest reply from me is to send over an email. So if you go to oleopeabody.com, you can hit the submit form. Um, those come right to me, um, Sarah, the owner. And so you'll get a response from me. We reply to all emails within 24 hours. So you're going to see something come right back to you. You can call. We return all phone calls, but it might take a couple days to get to get back to your phone call. And if you DM me on Instagram or, or, or another <laughs> platform, I will reply to you. But it's not going to be the full, complete reply that you deserve deserve if you is if you send an email so um but i love it i love to hear from prospective clients past clients you know friends vendors so absolutely would love for you to reach out awesome sarah well it has been a pleasure to have you on thank you so much thank you daniel congrats on this podcast this was fun <laughs> <laughs> oh it's my pleasure it's been a blast talking to all of you so thank you again i hope to see you again at olio very very soon yeah, and come back. yeah yeah oh absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. Well, take care. And to all of you watching and listening out there, thank you so much for joining us. This has been Daniel Krikorian from the wonderful world of weddings. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Yeah.